I'm Alex. And I'm Teddy. And I'm Spencer. And we are the Button Mappers. Hey, the Button Mappers. Boys. <laughs> Should I say Game Boys? Oh. Eh. Yeah, I'm but I'm I, I'm really not a boy. I'm I'm kind of advanced in my old age. I call you Game Man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't work. <laughs> horrible bootleg. <laughs> game Man. Everybody. I'm game, game Child. <laughs> Just a game boy in a game world. <laughs> and I get advanced. Lucky for me that we here at the Button Mappers are doing Game Boy Advance Month. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Wait, who's that? We're not. Yeah, boys. Every... <laughs> it's a game man. Is there a game man in here? A game, a game man. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> watch it. Game Just, man. Well, <laughs> it's a play both. We You're don't saying know. it too fast. <laughs> Are we all gay men here? <laughs> this is a podcast about gay men. Um, and we, we got we, joining us today is Axel. Axel Wolf, how's it going? It's going good. How are you guys doing? Better now. Here, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here. I'm Game Boy, Game M. The Game uh, Man. <laughs> Fine, we'll game call it Game Man. Man. Yeah, really like like Game Man advance. Game Man. Game Man. You got like we'll just we'll just add a syllable <laughs> in there. Game a Man. Game a Man. A Game of Man. <laughs> 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 Ax- buddy it's Axel's talk, here yeah. Axel from Friendly Fire Gaming um, Also this is a cross promotion Because Axel and I have a podcast On my on Turbo Zone Axel what the hell is that podcast called Kentucky Fried Gaming Where we eat chicken You know I heard the podcast oh. I was a little bit distracted with all the chewing that was all. I honestly problem. thought I could use more chewing. You should bring more chicken on. Should we pre-chew the food before the yeah. show? If you could. just chew it the whole time. Or should I get somebody else to like baby bird it into my mouth? I say you either you either pre-chew it so there is no chewing, or go the Teddy route and make it all about the chewing. Just you need to pick one only, and run with it. Only chewing. Okay. We well, can only do mashed potatoes. That might be a little better. That would be There's smooth. No crunching. Hmm. Absolutely. Really, you know, mash them up. <laughs> Wash it down with some gravy. <laughs> yeah, just have with a podcast with, with like sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a category somewhere where that where that works. I'm sure, you'd hit some more box. <laughs> Just two hours of uh, of us like devouring food in your ear. <laughs> oh, so hey, Axel, you finished the Elden Ring? No, <laughs> hell. <laughs> All right, well, you should get past that boss. You hear one of them choke on a bone. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, we're not choking on bones because we're going to talk about uh, video games on the Game Boy Advance. But before we do, we like to do Q and A, the game talk. But before we do, why that... don't you throw the viewers a bone? <laughs> Tell them what we'll do before that. Yeah. <laughs> but before that, uh, head on over to Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Um, where you can listen to the button mappers while you eat your KFC, which is some chicken. And, but before we do that, 
Also head over to the Discord uh, where you can tell me what your favorite KFC order is. And before we do that, Spencer, what do we do? Before you before you do any of that, make sure that you mosey on over to YouTube and press start on the subscribe button. Uh, leave us a great little comment. Hit the like button. And ring that bell so you're always notified whenever we upload new content on the channel. Axel, is there anything else you want the viewers to do before any of that? Uh, make sure you're hungry for chicken. All this chicken talk, now I am hungry. That's our new series, but that's your new series, chicken by the way. Talk. Just chicken, chicken talk. Chicken we talk. bring a new piece of chicken to the table each, <laughs> each month. You guys, we're going to review dark meat today. <laughs> Just a dark meat breast. Mm. <laughs> feel. You're going to run out of content pretty quickly on that one. <laughs> nah, man, there's a lot of ways you can chicken the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it up to you guys. I'm excited to see. Okay. So let's do what we what we do. Uh we answer the questions. And the first one comes from Terry309. Hmm. Terry oh, liked Game Talk last time. He said finally a game talker. Every game mentioned looks good or is good. Standards. Um Question, do you prefer, and I'll outline this a little bit. He, he has a question in comparing the Kirby games. Do you prefer the Masahiro Sakurai Kirby games or the Shinichi Shimamura Kirby games? And for context, he lists Sakurai's games as Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby's Adventure, Kirby's Superstar, and Kirby Air Ride, and Shimamura's games as Kirby's Dreamland 2, Dreamland 3, Kirby 64, and Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. Axel? go first i'm the worst one to go first um i've barely played any kirby games um the only one i remember playing a lot of was a uh, kirby nightmare and dream Island on uh, game boy so i guess i would go with shimmer <laughs> you, that was the sound shimmer. of somebody uh, very slowly like, opening a door shimmer <laughs> shimamora <laughs> yeah, shimamora yeah <laughs> That could be seen as the opposite too, if it got you to stop playing Kirby games. That's a good point. He said, "I play this. Well, I've had enough." Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've I've dabbled in them, you know, over the years, but that's the only one I remember actually owning and playing a bunch of on the school bus and stuff. Good one. I'll go next because oh. I know only slightly more than him, and I would say there's no point in. And comparing because Kirby's always wonderful. So all Kirby's are welcome. I have no idea what those names are. So they're all great. Well, for reference, awesome. have you played Dreamland 2, 3, 64, or Nightmare in Dreamland? 64, yeah. Okay. And then for other reference, have you you've played Dreamland, Superstar, and Bits of Adventure? Yeah. Okay. Three are Sakurai's. And uh, 64 is Shima Murs. I, I couldn't in any any way tell you that there's a, a vast... I mean, I, obviously Kirby 64 is different, but I felt the charm was all there. So I couldn't... I think they're all great. I, I, don't, I don't have one or the other. BBA. BBA. I think I have the next amount of Kirby knowledge, and Alex will probably go last. I don't know. That's probably how we're going right now. So uh, I've played Dreamland, Adventure, Superstar, and Air Ride, all four of Sakurai's games. I've dabbled in two, three, and then I really like Kirby 64 and Nightmare in Dreamland. I'm kind of torn because, like, I really love um, 64 and Nightmare in Dreamland. And I like two from what I remember. I just It's been so long. And three I didn't really like. And I really like Dreamland and superstar I, I guess i like air ride but adventure i don't really care as much about and so i i'm, I'm a little torn because it's like three and one and three and one i would probably it's they're neck and neck but i'd probably go with shimamura i, I think Nightmare in dreamland is maybe one of my favorite kirby games even though it's been a while since i played it and dreamland 2 is really good as well 
And then 64, I know it's, you know, controversial. I happen to like it. So, yeah, I'll go Shimomura. I like Kirby because he's pink. I'm just kidding. Um, so, All right, uh, next it question. is notable. <laughs> it is, it, yeah, I like Kirby because he can do, he can puff up into a big guy, float around. Um, so, uh, it's notable to say that he listed of the Shimomura games, he, he listed the, um, what the hell's called a dark matter trilogy would have fuck it's uh, dreamland 2 3 and uh 64 um which says a lot of like those games in particular say a lot about that style of kirby because they're they're more they're more like sc- slower deliberate more collectible games uh whereas sakura games are a little more simplistic and fast-paced meant to be more arcadey um I probably would say the Shimomura games. Uh, I prefer well, Dreamland Three is my favorite. Uh, I like Dreamland Two a lot. Um, and sixty four, I'm not that keen on, but it's simply just because I don't like Kirby's movement speed. Like, I think the, the game design's fine. I just have trouble like focusing while I play it because I'm like Kirby, go, Kirby, go faster. <laughs> but um, but uh, I like all Kirby. Kirby's good. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're doing an Adam Sandler impression. <laughs> yeah, I'm like Billy Max. Is good. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I just Kirby think I him in the bathtub. Good. Stay stay tuned for the map out of this month, Little Nikki from Game Boy Color. <laughs> oh yeah, play on the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot oh, no. about that. <laughs> you might hear it today. How did you forget where that's been our map out? We've had it planned for weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, forgot. <laughs> I mean, how did I forget? I don't know. Horse. Okay. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, you Teru. <laughs> Teru. Anime, Terry. This one comes from. Who, oh, whoa. This was this guy, Axel? It's pretty chill. Skip it. <laughs> Skip What's your it. favorite GBA <laughs> accessory? Ooh. Uh, I'll just go ahead and get mine out of the way because I've talked about it before, but I used to love my Godzilla worm light. It was shaped like Godzilla, and it, he breathed light onto the original Game Boy Advance. I used to have a friend that had, I don't remember what it was from, but he had like some, it was like some goo monster that snapped onto it that had a light on it. I always thought that was pretty cool too. Um, mine, I, I actually had mine in mind when I um, did the question, but I always used to use the GBA jukebox a lot. Um, it was an MP3 player that was licensed by Nintendo. Um, That's neat. I used to use that because it was cool because you could put just a, a battery in it and you could uh, carry it around with you and put music on it and you wouldn't even need the Game Boy Advance after after you put music on it. But I, I had like the light, the worm light. And uh, I remember my mom got me like some Mad Cat starter kit that had like all kinds of just like kooky shit that you could throw on it or throw it in and um oh, i would, i really like that the those days where they had they just kind of went crazy with the accessories i think i had one of those mad cats type it's like starter kit i don't know if it was mad cats but one of the starter kits too because i had like a like i had like the indigo uh original gba but i had like a weird like silicone white like cover for it and then like and that had like a weird like stri- like not like strap but uh what they call it um Damn it! Like you put keys on and stuff. Uh, lanyard. lanyard. Yeah, I had like a red lanyard on it and stuff. Like I guess I could lanyard the Game Boy Advance around. I don't know, but it was yeah, it was very unnecessary. <laughs> but I was cool as hell when I was like you know little. It's definitely Game Boy Advance mobile GPS when I used to get lost walking home. No, um, that exists. <laughs> I guess I like the link cable. I mean guess i don't know i didn't really have much but the worm light i primarily use for my game boy my game boy color um i guess i like the worm light i don't know they're all outdated and antiquated at this point but i i guess there was a charm to linking up and getting pokemans i'll say the uh game boy advance to gamecube attachment Ooh, that's a good one because it enabled some games that Mostly suck. <laughs> what? Shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Crystal... You can play Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. 
I thought that Zelda Four. game was pretty good. You could play Final Fantasy Christmas Chronicles. <laughs> yeah, are you the RPG guy? It's your territory. Yeah, when are we going to do an episode on Crystal Chronicles, Spencer? I, this is the first you brought it up. I haven't. <laughs> that game's not very. Sun? Game's not very good. Just put it. Was it? There. Golden Sun. <laughs> what about it? So when are you going to do Golden Sun? Well, you just spoil it. That's my game for today. But <laughs> damn it, Axel! So, like in ten that minutes, that was my game for the day too. <laughs> now I have to do it quicker than Spencer. Yeah. Okay. We'll just when we start doing it, we're like, okay, me first. We'll just race. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Guess what I'm doing today? <laughs> I was just thinking of one of the RPGs I had on the Game Boy. <laughs> All right, next one comes from I Got Kings. Go fish. <laughs> well, I got aces next. Hey, Brian. Play poker? Yeah. Question for GBA month. There are many ways to play GBA games. How do you all play GBA games? Original GBA, GBA SP, GBA Micro, Game Boy Advance player on GameCube, Nintendo DS, or emulation. Ooh, I don't know if my answer fits into any of those. The way that I like Wii U, I guess it's not yeah. there, but I'll list. Yeah, it. the Wii U. No. Um. Uh. Well, while I do have a Game Boy Advance SP and I do play that uh, when I am at home and I just want to play like I have my game today, um, I use my Retron Five, which is not emulation, but it is also emulation because you put the cartridge into the Retron 5 and then it rips the game from the cartridge and then it emulates it on the Retron 5. But I'm still using the cartridge. So, so that's the definition like, of emulation. Next. Who, but else, like, who else wants but, to but, but no, but I'm still using the cartridge. So it's like... Doesn't matter. You can pull the, but, you can pull the ROM can save, off the cartridge. That's how you get it to be a ROM. But, but, but I can save the game and then load it back onto the cartridge and then just keep the, the save still. So like... Why I don't know. It's what Alex is a dirty pirate. All right, Axel, how do you? I play? own the game. I own, it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grab it. <laughs> I play on the toilet. I was just gonna say that. Too. <laughs> uh, actually, mine is on the T's because it's mostly mostly through emulation. <laughs> I don't have my uh, original Game Boy colors or my Advance anymore. Um, I have a couple of the DSs, but those are mostly for the kids to play. Um, yeah, it's mostly emulation. Um, I'm not like a crazy pirate. I don't download like thousands of games. I just download what I feel like playing. Um, I should buy the uh, the game GameCube uh, attachment because I do still have uh, a box full of Game Boy Advance games and stuff, but no way to play them. Or the Retron, I guess, would make sense. I hate that Game Boy player. Hate strong, but I don't like using it. it. It's weird. You have a weird overlay that you can't take off the screen. You can change the images, but they're not great. I think honestly, the SNES one looks better as far as uh, and like Game Boy games on the TV. Um, but I have it. But that's not my primary way. Also, you need the disc. You need the hardware. It's just. I don't know. And it's not great. GameCube controller is awful for 2D games anyway. It's that. The D-pad yeah. sucks. D-pad's like the size of a nipple. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Practice. weird for me. It's weird. I uh, weird didn't like the <laughs> DS for GBA we games because it. it's always awkward. Speaking of awkward. Uh, <laughs> like with the cartridge jutting out of the console. And I mean, as much as I like the D-pad, the buttons are small. So I don't like the DS. I've never owned an SP. I know they have the backlight, but they also seem a little small. My favorite model is the standard GBA model. And I bought one that was modified with a backlit screen. I do have an issue with it in that because it was custom made, it has like weird nipple buttons for select. Ooh. Speaking of nipples, <laughs> they're like really thin nipples. So more like no. anal beads. Those are the nasty ones. Um, it's thinner. So this guy like custom did it, and then like it, it's not working, and so like it's stuck on the default brightest setting. 
even though you can modify it to change how bright it is. Now the GBA just dies in a fucking hour with new batteries. <laughs> it's, it's like, well, I can't win with this. But I do like that uh, feel. So that would be my favorite, my go-to. Uh, emulation on my phone. Almost, ex- uh, not almost, exclusively. <laughs> That's all. You, you use the touch screen? No, I use a Razer Kishi. Hey, that's what oh, I have. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's where handy I too. play almost all games if it's not on <laughs> PC or new. Actually, I play new games there too. So, But GBA games look really good like that too. Oh, they look beautiful. Yeah. Explains why your face is so clean right now. Razer, Kishi, working really well. I have a box for mine. So I right take here. my whole phone and just rub it this on my the face. Razer Kishi. I got my Razer Kishi box. Flex is holding up his Razer Kishi box. Yeah. Not my Kishi. I don't know what the hell it is. It's somewhere around here. Put your Kishi back in your box. I got my I, Game Boy too. I got a new phone just for the fact that I that I could put the Razer Kishi on the other phone so it's caseless now. But all but hundred oh. percent like is just an emulation station now. Yeah, that's the one thing I hate about the Kishi because I have to like take my phone out of the fucking case. Yeah. Everybody needs a good razor. Okay. Best mapper. <clears throat> hey. He uh. came at us with the, I had a question from the previous episode that wasn't answered. Little did he know that we record these advance, like Game Boy Advance. So he asked it after we already recorded it. But copied his question over. Um, don't do that again. Uh, are you for or against emulation (laughs) against it it. (laughs) yeah you have to play on hard on actual actual hardware if you can't afford five hundred dollars for all the equipment then you don't deserve to play it (laughs) yeah my game today cost me 16.95 i could have gotten it for free um on my phone through emulation but I bought it on my Game Boy Advance. Good Very advanced of you. True gamer. That's almost a family meal at KFC. Almost. Almost. Which comes with eight eight pieces of chicken, two <laughs> sides, and <laughs> four biscuits. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we're getting we're getting paid with a kernel now, so we have to promote. Uh, I think this is a no br- uh yeah. I'm for emulation. I think from every possible window, it's a win. Uh, like, especially if you're looking, if you're looking at like preserving gaming history. I mean, what better way than to have them all just stored in a database that you can access at your whim? Because God knows the publishers don't give a shit about that. So, hundred percent for emulation. I agree. I think as long as you're not like emulating like the switch and some shit you know something that's like relevant that you can like you know that's <laughs> you can still purchase and buy at a store like i can't buy gba games at walmart <laughs> be cool though walmart listen <laughs> obvious yes i mean if you if you're like video game connoisseur or preservist or you know like you like the historical aspect of games i mean emulation is that you know and i think you should there shouldn't be like that kind of like a wall fee of entry into getting into the medium and obviously if you want to experience things in their purest form sure yeah play a cartridge and you know and it's less distractions whatever and you know you get the original hardware but i mean with modern tvs and stuff that's hard anyway it's and so i don't i don't necessarily see that gaming should be a luxury thing i would rather more people even younger kids get into it in the most accessible ways possible you know and if that leads to them getting n64s later on sure yeah cool but i mean let them emulate screw it Last one comes from majority. Wait, did it, wait, did Axel get the answer? Oh, I said I'm against it. Okay. 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 Moving on. <laughs> Gar. Oh, saw that one coming. Yeah. <clears throat> Axel's anti-pirate. 
hate pirates. What is what's lover. the opposite of a pirate? Land lover. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Technically, I think he's right. We're yeah, we're we're land lovers. We only play on original hardware. So I'm just calling them <laughs> <laughs> the land lovers. <laughs> land walkers. Yeah, that's that's the clapback against any anti emulation argument. <laughs> what are you, a land lover? <laughs> <laughs> whenever whenever they get into an argument, the pirate just steps on a boat and goes, Ah, you can't get me. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm a land lover. I keep doing yeah, that. Basically. It's just emulating. It's a free, you know, sale, you know. Ready? Yeah. Java T. Exclusively handheld consoles have a future. If so, how? If not, why not? Say what? Uh, read that one more time. Yeah, I'll explain it. Could exclusively handheld consoles have a future? If so, how? If not, why not? So what I mean by that is like the Switch is obviously not exclusively handheld. It's multi-purpose. I don't but think there is exclusively handheld console. Switch Lite. Okay. True. It is. Okay. My Switch is mostly just handheld, unless I'm recording something. So, I I don't I don't think there really is a future for it. Um, I think Nintendo even saw that when they decided to make the dock. And I mean, even the Steam Deck, I think you can still plug up to like a TV or something. Mm-hmm. I, well, technology is in a place where that I don't even think it would be possible unless you really blocked your your device with like a bunch of which Nintendo probably would, but <laughs> if they wanted to. But otherwise, nobody else would do would bother because they'll they would love to just put like a. USB C thing on there, and really at that point, <laughs> you're at the whim of the market. So, I don't even think it's really possible to do it. Uh, could it? Yeah, I think, in fact, I think, I think in mobile is the way to go. I mean, mobile phones are super, super popular, and kids mostly, I mean, you can theoretically play that on a bigger screen, but nobody does. So the concept is there. It's just that I just don't think technology would even allow that at this point. Well, I was going to say, we kind of already answered the question. What, if there is exclusively mobile, quote-unquote, consoles, it's going to be something like the Razer Kishi, where you just plug in your phone, and then that's your mobile console. And, you know, you have the buttons and shit. Like, the, I, I, the Switch changed the game there with the idea of the hybrid console, and I don't think... I mean, I, mean, I, I could be wrong. You know, Nintendo could announce the fucking nintendo whatever the fuck wii u2 or then the nintendo 54 ds and then we're back to the old ways but i don't think it's going to happen i think uh they're seeing too much success and other companies are noticing that and we're going to see hybrid consoles <laughs> a lot more well i mean even at even like like a, a consumer standpoint why would you want something that's only handheld if you can have something that you can also plug to your tv and still does the same thing and if you just want to play it handheld, you just play it handheld. I guess the game and watch disagrees with you. Oh yeah, <laughs> but that's that's like a collector's item though. Hmm. But is there a future for collector's item handhelds? I don't know. I mean, like you could say, yeah, maybe the phone you can cast it to the TV, and then it's that. Like I don't know. Like you know, there is the technological aspect of it. So there well, was a GBA like mini console yeah. i would be down no it's true i mean i, I bought yeah. both of those game and watches i know teddy got the zelda one as well you know so i i say like there's no future but i bought two of those fucking things already and I'd yeah. pr- i'll buy more <laughs> but i'll I mean, buy more the, damn it <laughs> i i agree with the mini idea I and mean, i would love to get my hands on something like that but at the same time that's not really the future right like kind of like what alex was saying like that's it's like a novelty at that point. Like a collector's thing. Yeah. For people to like appreciate it. Even though, you know what? That uh, yeah. What about that? That uh, I forgot what the, what company it was. That is it um, the one that makes all the like the high end second like, uh, like third party consoles like the analog. They did analog pocket. But it, it, even that's dockable. 
and and that plays like old handhelds. <laughs> so I don't know. I guess my answer is yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a cloud truck. <laughs> I just play it if it's got buttons on it. I it's like Kirby cause he round. <laughs> <laughs> he sucks like me. Oh, oh my god, don't say it in such an aggressive he, voice. He, he sucks like my dad tells me I suck. <laughs> <laughs> so I identify with Kirby. <laughs> I just like how Axel said and then like a, a deep gravelly voice. He sucks like me. <laughs> he sucks like he me. He sucks Kid, like me. Kids, if your dad says you suck, don't listen to him. He sucks. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I, top dad quotes <laughs> during actual say, new say for dad month, please. One Fire dad to dad. another. We all suck. Yeah. <laughs> Other top dad quote from Axel. Just hitting him out of the park right today. Stepped up to the plates. Winging their thought, own homers. I thought he was mommy Axel. <laughs> That's why he's giving the good dad tips. You know? Holy shit. Did you guys hear that thunder? I hope that no. didn't pick up. No, I didn't hear it. Why, is it always, why am I always in the middle of a fucking hurricane when we record these now? You need to like do weatherman, <laughs> Alex. Today, I'm out of here in the eye of the storm. We're talking about Cubby. <laughs> he sucks. He sucks. You're like blown away. <laughs> well, before you get blown away, uh, viewers, I have Game Boy Advance games to talk about. I'd like to start. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Pick an axle by his toe. I have been playing Castlevania Circle of the Moon mm. for the Game Boy Advance for the Switch. For the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> it's, it's the Castlevania uh, GBA collection. Nice. <clears throat> this uh, this game launched uh, for the GBA. Um, I believe it was a launch title. And I've already said before, I didn't, I didn't really get a chance to play the GBA Castlevania games. Um, so, um, when you guys were doing the GBA, uh, uh, month, it was like the perfect time. Plus I had just bought it when it was on sale. So, um, so this game starts off with Dracula coming back again. Go figure. Right as it happens, what? you and your, your homie is conveniently rolling up on it. And your mentor wants to put the evil genie back into his bottle, but Dracula kidnaps him, and you fall through the floor to the bottom of the castle. Uh, you play as Nathan. He's kind of a hardcore, whip-carrying bastard. And you're trying to save your mentor, who has been basically Princess Peached. Uh, also, uh, your mentor's son is with you, but his emo ass just keeps going on his own, trying to show Daddy he isn't a failure. Uh, the story is very Castlevania. You pretty much know what the deal is. Occasionally, you'll run back into Hugh, who is the mentor, uh, the mentor's son. Um, but he has a chip on his shoulder. Every time you run into him, he's just kind of like, no, let me do it, and fucking runs away. Um, this is one of the Metroidvania-style games. There's, uh, backtracking portals. You have, uh, you know, you gain abilities to access certain areas. You level up your character. Uh, I will say I played through Aria of Sorrow for Turbo Zone last year. And this one I do think is a little harder. Um, right away I noticed I was having a hard time jumping and attacking at the right times in the air. It got a little better after I gained the run ability and the double jump. But early on it was giving me trouble. I felt like the movement was clunky, but maybe it was just me. So far, graphically, um, I think the graphics are passable. Maybe it's just because I played Aria first, but the levels kind of look bland. It's like typical underground sewer, catacomb, towers. Uh, the battle arena where I'm at now was pretty cool, but it's hard as fuck. Mm. 
there you gain equipment um like armor and rings that you pick up to boost your stats i haven't really seen many different types of items you usually just pick up the same equipment a bunch of different times i believe it's just random drops right now i think i have like 25 le uh, leather armors um, one of the things I wish was in the game was the ability to sell your equipment in a shop. There is no shop in this game. It would made it would have made more sense why you get so many of the same items. Uh, this game also has a card system, which is probably the uh, heard that thunder. Uh, the card system die. is probably the best thing about it. Um, you basically you collect these cards that that sometimes drop from different monsters. And you can mix and match to create different magic loadouts. It's, I believe in total there's like, I think there's like a hundred different variations. Um, certain enemies drop specific cards. It's just finding out who drops what to kind of experiment with what uh, the cards and abilities can do. Um, I guess there's probably lists online that'll tell you who need who you need to kill to to get certain cards i haven't looked up the list but right now i only have like five cards i've been using either the flaming whip or like the flaming sword so far um i know there's like uh magic you get later for summons that should be pretty useful i have a little over halfway um through the map unlock so far i'm about five hours in it uh the level layout is pretty good but some areas um kind of feel like they're only there to make the game longer or something like you you go through a hallway and there's nothing but enemies there and it's just a straight direction and it feels like it's never going to end kind of feels like it was just there for fluff or maybe it was good for grinding um there's a lot of times where i've been grinding so far there was a part where i couldn't where I, whenever i fought this boss i just kept felt like i was doing no damage at all so i ended up grinding for probably about an hour just so i could beat him um, I don't think there's anything special or different with the Switch version of the game. Um, there's a notification thing that pops up every time you get a card, but it was kind of annoying, so I turned that feature off. Other than that, you get, like, the, uh, the save your game or change your screen size and stuff like that that they normally have in collections. Actually, uh, I take it back. There is a, an encyclopedia in the Switch version that does tell you what enemies drop, so if you have the Switch version, you'd be able to look it up. You wouldn't have to look up an enemy guide. Um, overall, I'm enjoying Castlevania. Uh, right now, I wouldn't say I like it more than Symphony of the Night or uh, Aria of Sorrow at that. But I like it enough, and I'm going to finish it. And then I can finally move on to Harmony and finish off all the GBA games. <laughs> this is your second game talk with us, right? Uh, yes, I think so. Do you realize that on that one, on the first one, you also did a, a Metroidvania style game? Yeah, for Metroid, but yeah. Yeah. Are you a big <laughs> Metroidvania Vania guy? Um, I dabbled in them when I was younger, but I never beat any until we did the uh, Metroid one, Metroid Fusion, I think. Do you, did you do? Holy shit! Oh, Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to mute, keep myself <laughs> muted until I talk because the thunder is crazy right now. Um. <laughs> Yeah, you did like the the mummy demastered, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer? Real oh, oh, sorry. real quick, do you prefer uh, Metroidvania, Castlevania, or do you prefer side scroller? The uh, Metroidvania. I prefer the Metroidvanias. I've tried to go back and play some of the older Castlevanias and just and just kind of fall off. Thank you for saying that. I agree. I think they're crap. I mean, you're wrong, but those are your words. Those are Spencer's words. Yeah. Well, Alex, you realized yeah. that you <laughs> this is your second game talk, and you did like a perfect game capitulation. <laughs> it's a good word. Yeah. It's like capital, you, but like capitulate. Do you realize Capitu capitulated? <laughs> <laughs> do you realize I don't know what capitulate means? <laughs> yeah, he's throwing out them heavy words. <laughs> One weighs a lot. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna capitulate. Capitulating. <laughs> oh, that's not what I thought. That's what I did when the twin snake-headed boss in Circle of the Moon appeared. Because holy shit, them bosses are hard. I did not grind for them. You know which one I'm talking about? The twin snake. 
double dragon metal, thing? Metal oh, no. I don't... Yeah. No, I haven't got to him. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, just <laughs> that's the the bosses suck, man. They're the great, one I right? just hard, the one I but... just beat was the uh, the giant goat. I think was the last boss that I finished. He's like stuck yeah. in something, and he's like shooting orbs and shit at you and skeletons. Okay. Yeah, he's the it's one I had minute, to grind. Yeah. Played this on Wii U of all things, and I think I made it five hours in. So you probably took this boss on, but uh, yeah, I did not grind for bosses i don't know like how did you feel about grinding in a castlevania game compared to maybe something like a traditional rpg um it's all right um i didn't mind it in this one because like the area where the save point was was pretty much just filled with things that i, I could kill pretty easily so um i know one thing those fucking flying swords were a pain in the ass trying to take those damn things they hover and like kind of sink and stuff yeah and they just keep floating yeah. around and then they can float under the ground and stuff like that so you can't hit them okay ass swords yeah those bitch ass swords but yeah the flying the the goat was the last boss that i've gotten to or the last boss i remember beating oh, yeah i'm sure you made cheese out of him after a while <laughs> cheese cheese land the throwback <laughs> Classic. The axel. Um, mommy axel mommy <laughs> mommy <laughs> mommy hey would you please pass the goat cheese isn't there a boss of majora's mask named goat yeah he's the goat yeah. Always cracks me up. I think I used capitulation, right? What is the definition of capitulation? <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't tell you one way. How do you other. spell it? <laughs> Starts uh, with a K. Uh, like recapitulate, starts, you know? Starts yeah, with a Q. The way they define it is surrender. Does it make sense? I, I didn't think it meant that. Did not do a perfect surrender. Tell my enemies. He surrendered the information. I suppose. <laughs> Put him in a position he... where he had to submit information. <laughs> surrender it now. Circle of the moon. What is this? <laughs> is this game you talk of? Capitulate. Capitulate <laughs> now. <laughs> Axel is being oddly difficult with us. He refused to tell us his game for game talk. But we forced him to capitulate. He had to look it up before he finally surrendered. <laughs> Axel, please capitulate all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> Mommy Axel, capitulate all over me. Me, please, please capitulate. I think your definition of capitulate is different. <laughs> It can mean different things to different people. It's a regional thing. That could be the weirdest thing I had ever said on the show. <laughs> Who's hitting this? Spencer, Spencer, put up a banner. Yeah. Weirdest thing Alex ever said on the show banner. I got it. We're never using that again. <laughs> Useful banner. Making Spencer make 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 assets for one joke. All right, next. Who's going next? Uh, mine was uh, mine was spoiled by Axel, so I'll I'll go ahead and do mine. Nick. great. I can I can mute my microphone, so the Sorry. apocalypse in the background is isn't audible. I like it when when Alex is about to say something. Thunder strikes, like in like in a in a, in a horror so movie. Fucking it's so fucking loud right now too. You guys haven't even heard the worst ones. I started muting my mic, and it's like. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit. I'm Honestly, I think you should leave him in for dramatic effect. Yeah, I kind of like it. it. A very spicy game talk. It worked well with Castlevania. Okay, that, one, that one wasn't so loud. Yeah. There was one earlier that like was so fucking loud. I was like, Jesus. I hope like it doesn't do that while I'm doing my game. I hope it does. I hope it does. Yeah. Yeah. 
Talk to us about the Golden Grams. The golden Era. Spencer. All right. My game is Golden Sun. It was released in 2001. It's you the sound first like one. You, you, you're like, you can't give me like a book report. Yeah. That's <laughs> part of the class. Golden Sun is a good game on the Game Boy Advance. It was an early RPG that truly proved what the Game Boy Advance was capable of. I really like this game. It's um, it's made by a Camelot, and you would think in like an early attempt at an RPG on the Game Boy Advance, it would be more of like a trial, like more of like um, think of like Breath of Fire, like or like the first Breath of Fire is just like a a really generic. In my opinion, not great uh, RPG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Teddy just had like a, a hot tamale or something. So, Air that's breath. breath of fire. Uh, it's like Kirby. <laughs> Lightning might be striking Alex. So, <laughs> uh, with with Golden Sun, it's surprisingly great. Uh, it's it looks really really good. The plot is actually fairly interesting. Uh, and the graphics are mind-bogglingly good. Like they did like a this interesting perspective that emulates like three D, so it feels real. It feels like you're in the fight. Um, there's just a lot about this game to love. And I, I was I played it when I was in high school, and I appreciated it then too. I remember liking it, but I played it recently as well, and was really just blown away by how ahead of their time they were when they made Golden Sun. It is it it's really not average at all in any any aspect. The the leveling up system you you apply with these uh gins, there's these spirits and th- they have different elements and different stats that change the way your character functions so like it, you could turn any character into any other kind of character although each character has their strengths so you should probably play to those. Um, but it changes their magic around. Uh, it it actually has different ways of implying or sorry applying uh, area of of effect spells. So like in a lot of games, you'll just have a move like Thunder All, which will hit all enemies with thunder. Well, in this game, it has a thunder that can hit all enemies or at least most enemies usually. Um, but it has different scales of of where the strong points will be. So like if it hits three enemies, it might be a uh, triangle so the top the middle one will be the strongest hit and the side two will be weaker hits it's really really cool and, and just really impressive the way the different ways they were able to mix that up to make combat interesting and 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 make all the characters feel different and customizable at the same time it also uses the magic in the game which is called synergy it uses it as a puzzle element to get through the game so like you can push things with this push spell or you can use frost to make things pillars there's there's all these different ways that they utilize magic that that makes dungeon crawling a lot more interesting and makes exploration it gives it like a zelda feel almost where you have to once you get new spells you can manipulate the environment and have different ways to get around really really impressive game it's 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 odd that it doesn't have more to it like it has like two sequels i think and it's just odd that it never blew up any bigger because it's 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 up there. It, it's competitive with any RPG series I've ever seen. So odd and a disappointment. That there's not more of it. I just wanted yeah, to mention Shining Force because Shining Force. Thank you. I like I know more about this uh, like too. triangle system. Can you tell me about the triangle strategy? <laughs> Project Triangle. There's a lot of talking. A lot of talking. Did I, uh, is that a real-time system? No, it's turn-based. How does that work? The square triangle thing? Square triangle? Can you say like there's like squares or triangles appearing on screen or something? No, well, no. So, like, like, so like if you get a spell, like, we'll say lightning, right? It'll show you a little diagram of how the damage plays out. I have thunder. And so <laughs> so if like like okay, I'm trying to do it with my like okay, with my with my hand, right? It'll show something like that. 
So what that implies is that this one will do the most damage and this one will do less and this one will do less. So if you put this on the middle enemy, the ones to the side will take less damage, etc. It's just like a, a way of expressing how much damage will be caused. Pokemon does a similar thing when you look at like the walkthroughs where it's like circle is like a super effective and triangles like a not very effective. Like there's null. Is it comparable to that? No, it's completely different because it's it's referring to like if you do damage to multiple enemies. So like, visual damage. Yeah, so like if you have like five enemies that you're up against, right? It'll tell you if you put pos position the spell on the middle one, it'll do damage to the ones to the side, and it'll do like reduce damage to them. But it'll tell you in a graph how how much damage that'll be. And it, it's not always like it can it can change. It can be even all the way across. It can be high on the sides and go down. It just depends on the spell. When you're doing the triangle, do you all vote on what you're going to do next? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. Do you all vote? <laughs> Project triangle. Is that the strategy? <laughs> That's the strategy. Is it made by Square Enix? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's made by Camelot, and they made Shining Force and Mario Golf. Is that golfing segments? Yeah. I think Shining Force 1 is, like, unplayable, but 2 is... Shut up! 2 Stop, is pretty good. Two is, 2 is a pretty good game. I tried playing the third one, and I just didn't get very far. It's probably good, though. Stop it. They say you can't emulate on the Saturn. I disagree. I think Stop talking about the first Shining Force like that. It's really Are you bad. Are considering a Golden Sun Archive? Oh, God. Play the get your channel no. RPG Archive? Play the Game Gear once, but okay. Don't get me started. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. on the table. Someone else wants what to table? finish that game. Whose table? <laughs> it's just on the table. Ranking. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But no, I'd love All to. Right. It'd be fun to do that one. That was great. Thank you for golden. Did you did you get, get a tan in the golden sun? Who wants to go next? Somebody. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Alex, how's your thunder sandwich? I think I think we're calm right now. So I think if if you want, Teddy, I'll go next. I would love that. All righty. <laughs> Hello, my name is Alex. Welcome to my show. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't just like a random segment. Um, Axel is not allowed to participate in this question because he already knows. Uh, Spencer and Teddy, would you like to guess what series my game is from? Kirby. <laughs> it's not Kirby. <laughs> it was Axel. Axel. Axel guessed it. <laughs> uh, would I, to, would I like to guess? Yeah. The Shrek? The Shrek? No. It should, I, should, I should have played a Shrek game, though. No. Shrek's probably better. It's okay. So, I was originally going to play SimCity 2000, but then I Ooh. quickly realized that I should not play SimCity 2000 because trying to play a SimCity game on a Game Boy Advance is ungodly unbearable. Um, I did not have fun with that game so i put that game back in my bag and i got out old faithful one of my favorite gba games and probably my favorite series on the gba i played mega man zero oh it's mega man um mega man zero is a series which i'm talking about the first game but i just wanted to uh, make sure the fans and people know what the hell it is it's a game that takes place a uh, hundred years after the mega man x uh, timeline and it follows the character of Zero from the Mega Man X games. Um, and Mega Man Zero One, Zero is uh, awakened from his uh, 100 year sleep and uh, the world is upside down. Um, Mega Man X is this evil tyrant. He is retiring Reploids, which are the humanoid robots from the X-Series, that he thinks are Mavericks, but he is incorrect. So there's a rebellion fighting against Mega Man X. 
um, kind of funny, kind of turns things on its head that Mega Man X is the villain of the first game. I won't say too much else about the plot because it is pretty cool. Um, but the game itself is a continuation of the Mega Man X series. It's an action platformer with some light RPG elements. Um, those elements are there are these little uh, collectible things called cyber elves or like pets. Uh, you feed them and they can up your stats in certain areas. Um, the game itself is a, an open game. Um, you can go from parts of the world to the other parts of the world. Kind of cool. Instead of taking on the standard Mega Man levels where you fight a boss at the end, you take on missions. The leader of, of the Rebellion Seal, she will say, hey, I have um, this mission that like needs to be done. Save these people from this factory. Stop this train. Do whatever. And those are the missions you partake in. Um, you can uh, get multiple weapons. You start out with the uh, classic... Um, whatever, the, the gun. You also get uh, the Z-Saber, which is Zero's you know iconic weapon, the sword. Uh, but you can also get a spear and a shield, and you can carry two weapons at once and switch them on the fly with the shoulder buttons of the GBA. Uh, the Mega Man Zero games are known for being pretty difficult um, because of the RPG element. There is some grinding that has to be done if you want to up your stats. Um, I don't find it to be too bad, but um, you're not going to be able to up everything in one go, and, and unless you just fucking stay in one area and grind a lot, but really, you don't want to do that. It's, it's, it's an action game. Um, it's, it's, it's super fun. It's by NT Creates. Uh, you guys probably know NT Creates from some of the most modern games, being stuff like the Blaster Masters Zero, funnily enough, Zero series. Um, the Bloodstained uh, 8-bit games, what are they, those are called the, I forgot what they're called, the something night. the moon, or I don't know, Howl at the Moon. Like Howl at the Moon. Curse Osborne. of the Moon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Curse of the Moon, there it is. <laughs> those two. Uh, the Gal Gun, and also, which is known as, as like the spiritual successor to the Zero series, is the Striker Gun Vault games, which were on 3DS and Switch and stuff. Um, so Indie Creates is still around, but they were made up of former Capcom employees who started off making the Mega Man Zero series. A phenomenal game. If you were a Mega Man fan at this time, like I was, this was where Mega Man was, was on the GBA. And Mega Man Zero is probably, probably that just a series in general. It's probably the most refined Mega Man platformer gameplay I've, I've played. It's so fun. Uh, you, you can also get this on um, the DS with the Zero Collection or on the modern consoles like the Switch with the uh, Zero ZX Legacy Collection. Mega Man Zero. It's pretty fucking cool. Zero fucks given. Zero fucks given. <laughs> uh, my experience with Mega Man is I've played and beaten Mega Man 1, Mega Man 2, and Mega Man X. My complaints with the first two games are that they're too rigid and tough. And Mega Man X is too much wall jumping. I've also dabbled in Mega Man 7, which I thought had too much dialogue and was not fitting yeah. a Mega Man game. I know that's not a popular one. Um, how does Mega Man Zero compare to those experiences? And would you could you recommend it to me? My taste. Oh, um, it depends. Like, I don't think the wall jumping and Zero is as offensive as X, but it's definitely still there. It's it's, it's the gameplay feels closest to the X series, uh, but something you have to know about the X series is that later on, which this game takes as like branches off from X five because in a, a plot point in X five is like Zero seals himself away for for hundred years, and that's where this game picks up. Um, but um, the X games get very bogged down with plot, <laughs> so if you didn't like Seven because of the plot, you you might not like this either because there is a there's a lot of story um, in these games as well. Um, but I actually don't mind it. I don't. I think Mega Man's. I think Mega Man Seven is the the classic Mega Man games don't really have plots. It's like Doctor Wily's being evil again. Ooh, ooh. But I think the idea of of the the villain of the first Zero game actually just being X is interesting. Uh, there are some plot twists and stuff later on, but uh, it is like a when you first start the game, it is an interesting um, plot point that kind of sucks you into the game's narrative. Um, so for you, I think if you liked X. Probably you'd probably like zero. Um, just uh, get used to that wall jumping, boy. Uh, do you prefer? Okay, if you had, were there was there more of Mega Man Zero? Like there was how many more of them were there? There was there were there were four Mega Man Zero games, and then on the DS they made 
two ZX games, which ZX is like, it's it's sort of in the same series as Zero, it, but you don't play as Zero. You play some of the characters. It's like you know, it's the same world. I th- I played one of the ZX games. I actually liked it a lot. Um, but would how would you like if you had to make like a a ranking? If we had to do a ranking episode, how would you rank the first? Mega Man series, the the X series, and then the Zero series. That is really tough. Um, I'm pretty biased though because I really like the Zero series, so I'd probably put it as my favorite. And then, for overall quality, I'd probably put Mega Man and then Mega Man X because some some of the later X games kind of dip in quality, especially seven and eight. Hmm. Where does Mighty? Number nine fall in that. It falls into the trash, which NG, NG Creates was actually a little bit involved with the uh, minor number nine. So it's kind of shame. Sad. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they had too much to do with the development, but they were they they were involved <laughs> in some minor number nine stuff. Can I tell you that I have trauma with Mega Man X? Ooh, yeah, tell me. So I never owned it, but we rented it from Blockbuster. And I just, that has nothing to do with the story. But I, we were playing it one morning because I think we were just trying to milk it for all it's worth before my mom took it to yeah. took it back. And we were, we were playing it in the morning before school, just kind of in a hurry. And I was standing up. And I think I lost it, something I always lost. That game was pretty tough for me. And then I looked to my right, and there was literally a cockroach that was watching me play on my shoulder, <laughs> like sitting on my shoulder watching me play. <laughs> And I just remember, like, f- obviously flailing like like a crazy person, yeah. smacking my shirt, and just running out of the room. Anyway, that's my Mega Man story. Cockroach. I thought you were gonna okay. say like, I, like I looked over and there was a cockroach, and he pulled a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that game. <laughs> and I then I had the old blockbuster for Mega Man X. Yeah. the cockroach. They didn't believe me when I said a cockroach. The stole cockroach Mega took Man X. it. The cockroach. <laughs> oh, that's really left an imprint on your memory. It did. It did. Yeah. I like the game though. Yeah. It might help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking around. You know, um, I I realized with that ranking, we actually left off the Legends games, which I, I've talked about before in the 64 episodes. Mm. Um, yeah. But that because those actually take place like way after Zero games, but. It's fine. <laughs> Who cares? Where are those? Well, I wanted to get more like the ones that went longer. Like the 2D, yeah, and the ones that are more like, like, yeah, this is more in line with the classic Mega Man series anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Classic. Classic. Plus zero is cool. He's got that fucking ponytail. He's got no nonsense. No, no nonsense attitude. I respect like that. Sword. Sword. Yeah. It's like safe to say it's it's the Metal Gear Rising of the franchise. Ooh! <laughs> now I just want uh, Metal Gear riding platformers. <laughs> <laughs> what was his girlfriend say? Like hunt, the hunt for Rose or something? Rose? Yeah, Rose. Rose. Yeah, Rose. Him yeah, hunting for Rose. Rose. It's his name was. J- it's Jack. Something like that. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Yeah. It's probably it's probably all fake. Remember that me. scene in <laughs> remember that scene in four where he uh, break danced and had metal gears on his legs and he, he fought vamp. I uh, erased a lot of that game from my memory, so I <laughs> could not tell. He probably has just wait just, just wait till we get to that map out. <laughs> oh jeez. I thought the vamp stuff was some of the better stuff in that game. <laughs> remember when they brought Vamp back? Why are we talking about this? Hey, what's your game? <laughs> Say no more. What's the Heroes. earliest anime oh, slash manga you can think of? Earliest what? Astro Boy. Yep, I played Astro Boy. Oh, that game's sick. I played that too. Yes. Yeah. Played that for Game Talk. I didn't finish it. It's got about seven worlds. I cleared about three of them, just in the interest of time, but it's enough to talk about the general experience i don't know why i like know 
what Astro Boy is and I've known for a long time because in doing some research on the series, this was like the first game that even came overseas and I don't remember watching it on TV or anything, but it's been it's had like three serialized animes. It was a manga back in the 50s and the 60s. It's actually really cool. I went ahead and watched one of the early episodes and it held up pretty well. I was getting kind of like Popeye vibes, but with more of like a social commentary on like robot rights fascinating this game has a plot but it's primarily a beat em up slash shooter you use astro boy's ray gun but you can also do punches and level up uh aspects of kind of a skill tree or a skill panel i guess if you want to go with the robot angle uh the plot takes um elements from several of the uh reboots of astro boy over the years like the the robot rights but also several of the characters and stuff didn't follow it too much i honestly just skipped it because the gameplay was the meat and potatoes it was uh developed i want to get this right by treasure mm -hmm. and Hitmaker. treasure is known for just having all-around bangers you know gunstar heroes sin and punishment um what's the other one that uh, wario world I like Warrior World, but I think he's uh, Mischief Makers is what I was going for. <laughs> and published by Sega. So, you know, that's immediately a positive sign for this game. It's got kind of that awesome beat em up gameplay, side scrolling. Um, you know, it's the, they're very creative with the visuals. It's like a very visually breathtaking game. You might have like super oversized versions of like these robots in the streets or like miniature versions and they're swarming the screen. You might have a zero gravity level. You might have a level that's solely Astro Boy with his jetpacks and kind of like flying back and forth firing his laser and you can kind of hammer the the laser button they do very interesting things with enemies getting bigger and taking up a lot of the screen it just looks really good and you know a lot of that is seen in like gunstar heroes too they're really good with the 2d side scroller gameplay uh it was criticized for some repetitiveness um i kind of see that you know like there's some repetition and a lot of it is waiting till you get to the cool boss or whatever some very weird things about the game such as uh you know, like with the skill tree, every time you meet a new character, you get a bump to your skill tree. But some of it comes up at weird parts. Like you have to do the whole tutorial in order to get a skill bonus or you watch the entire credits to get a skill bonus. And they're just like weird uh, features. Also, it is one of those games that is a make you play it twice to see the true ending type of game. And that's kind of a turnoff for me. I don't necessarily want to play the same game twice. It is short enough. I don't think it would be a big hassle, but um, I get it for plot points. Um, very impressive. It's listed on in this book called uh, 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. So <laughs> I don't like, I mean, I don't know if I would go so far as to say that, but it is a really good and, uh, Good experience, a great platformer on the GBA. It's also hard as nails. Treasure is known for some difficulty for me. I've, I I used to have trouble with Gunstar Heroes uh, back in the day, um, but they do have an easy mode, so I recommend playing it on that. Astro Boy Omega Factor. I just wanted to add, hold on. I just wanted to add that uh, I, I believe it's based on the 2000s anime, which I have on DVD. I really like that anime. But also, did you know, this is some Did You Know Gaming Time, that there was a PS2 companion game made by Sonic Team, and it's fucking weird? <laughs> <laughs> Saw bits about the PS2 game. Yeah, that uh, Did that get a North American release? I actually own it. <laughs> oh, okay. I would guess if previously. It's this game came out under a different name on the NES. Not this game per se, but like Astro Boy was getting games on the Famicom and Super mm. Famicom called Mighty Adam. I think that's the Japanese name for the anime. Uh, I've never played those. This game is really cool. I liked it a lot. It. They always said that like one of the big advertising things for the Game Boy Advance was like it. It's good enough to like emulate the super nintendo graphically like in power and i think it's games like astro boy that show you not only can it emulate the super nintendo it can do a lot of things way better uh, they do so many cool tricks with the camera and, and so many cool like effects and this kind of brought i think we talked about this in one of the other episodes but one of those flash kind of style of animation which i'm not entirely opposed of uh, I think this game handled it really, really well. 
and the, the animations just look really clean, really cool, and and have a lot of pop to them. So I was blown away by this game graphically. It's definitely feels like an arcade experience on the handheld. Yeah, well, this game is my treasure. I have I have also played it, and it's really cool. Spencer, I think what you said about the the game, you know, about the Super Nintendo comparison thing, I think it honestly goes for all four of the games we've talked about today. But definitely Astro Boy, because uh, tre- treasure treasure always is always on their on their top game with the uh, with anything I've played by them. Honestly, I don't think I've played maybe like Ronald McDonald's McDonald Land or whatever the fuck that game's called on Genesis. But like <laughs> still, yeah. like Treasure is usually on top of their game, and they they know how to how to bring the presentation. Circle of the Moon is a bit reduced in terms of visuals. I mean, the guy's got a plain blocky face. You know, as mm-hmm. far as I remember, and they just do yeah. like the one color outlines of the characters. So I think Circle of the Moon does leave a bit to be desired. So but generally, yeah, yeah. I would agree that Game Boy Advance does have that Super Nintendo quality. You could play like basically perfect renditions of the Donkey Kong Country and Link to the Past. Um, Mario World. I played Mario World on GBA first. Here we go. Mario. You guys played that shit Astro Boy game on the Wii? No, that's the one based on the movie, right? Astro Boy, the video game. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's based on the weird American CG movie. Yeah, usually when they say the video game underneath the title, it's usually not a good thing. <laughs> are you are you now interested in watching the 2000s anime now that you've played this? Oh yeah, I'm interested in watching the '60s one if I can find more. Oh, of those it. are good too. Yeah, it's classic. Watched the first episode. I really liked it. Um, it had great commentary, and like I said, it held up well. I think that the color version might be the same, like the '80s one, might be a version of that um, old school one. So I'd be interested in watching that. I'd be interested in doing discourse on it if we want to watch that. Astro Boy Month. Oh yeah, I don't know what there is to talk about? Like what game talks there, please. <laughs> To map out the video game. Hmm. Actually, you ever play Astro Boy? Um, I've played a little bit of it. I know it's on the um the arcade thing that I have, but I've never like rented it or anything like that. The arcade thing you have? Uh, yeah, I have a like uh one of those arcade sticks that has like thousands of games on it. I like bought like a bar stools and the TV and pretty much in the corner of my room have a whole setup with the and arcade. He's never, he's never invited me over. Rip. Yeah, I bought two stools. <laughs> <laughs> I have chicken. <laughs> we'll play. <laughs> I, have, I got pizza rolls. Let's go. <laughs> That's all I need is chicken and pizza yeah. rolls. But I, I know I've, I've seen some of those games on there for sure, but I've never actually owned one of them. Wow. Bangers, all bangers today. I'd be glad I didn't stick with SimCity 2000. That, w- that really was rough. I bought that recently in a, a like like an eBay lot of, of GBA games because I, I do like just owning GBA games to play on my actual GBA. And um, I forgot what I was actually buying it. I think I bought it for like because the lot was super cheap and it came with Pac Man Pinball, which I wanted, mm-hmm. um, and some other games. Um, but it also came with like Peter Pan and SimCity 2000. And Jesus fucking Christ, guys. SimCity, I'm sure you guys have some experience with SimCity in some way, but a lot of, a lot of menu management and a lot of management of the screen itself and trying to do that on something that has two face buttons and two shoulder buttons is a fucking nightmare. Just trying to align my streets to like make my city was unbearable. <laughs> so I, I quickly had to abandon SimCity 2000. It's 2022. I mean, like, you know, times have changed. Yeah, it's true. I need SimCity 2022. For sure. You forgot to you announce want... the theme for next month. Probably do that. SimCity. Big one. Oh. No theme? No theme July. None at all. <laughs> we no theme to the content. If you can think of it, then it, it's not there. Do you guys want to hear Related. the GBA startup sound? 
Sure. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Oh, okay. Gotta make sure the volume's up. Isn't that beautiful? Did it. Something. Oh, I yeah. Turned it on. Yeah. Now I'll turn on my consoles. That was, that was Mega Man Zero. <laughs> Join us next month. Uh, we're doing Game Gear Month. Uh, Spencer's going to be playing the uh, Shining Force games, both of them on Game Gear. Um, Teddy it'll, it'll be, be sucktastic. <laughs> That's Kirby Mouth. We already did that one. Uh, oh, Teddy will be playing Dr. Robotics, Mean Bean Machine, and or Sonic Spinball on Game Gear. And oh. I'm going to play Shinobi. Game boys, game Years. girls, game gals. <sighs> All right, game men. It was a good show. <laughs> really rubbed one out. It was a super game episode. <laughs> what what was that word, Teddy? Capitulated. Yeah, we capitulated all consider over each other. Game, consider this game talk capitulated. <laughs> Thanks for capitulating. Um. Hey, y'all, don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers.